All right, NRL round four, Warriors back into the winner's circle. So good to be winning again. This is Warriors Anonymous. Let's check it out. This is Warriors Anonymous. That's right, the Warriors made it two wins from the last two games to get up to even Stevens, two and two record to start off 2024. Of course, the one New Zealand Warriors took on the Newcastle Knights and put up a familiar scoreline. I'm calling it the John Cusack. 2012, the win uh, against uh, the Knights at Go Media Stadium in Mount Smart. Uh, got Jared Cronin, Isaac Soss, and Monita Soss here to chat all about it. Now, boys, um, before we even get into the game, uh, this was a big week, quite a, a, another historic week for the Warriors as an organisation uh, because it was announced during the week by Andrew Abdo, Abs, um, that the uh, there'd be two new NRLW sites and one of them was going to be the one New Zealand Warriors. So um, we'll start with you, Moneta. Bro, um, what does that mean for the game in New Zealand from the, you know, in, in the women's rugby league? Oh, it's fantastic. It's a good chance for, a, you know, a Hina, so really represent, um, you know, uh, New Zealand in, in the league. And um, then we did a thing about two or three years ago, and it was kind of set, set and go. And, but uh, I think this is only going to inject a bit more passion and spirit making further across the nation. So watch out, you all blacks. <laughs> <laughs> is that, that going to be the new catchphrase, up the wahine? Yeah, up the I don't know if that works. Anyways. <laughs> 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 Depends how you use it. <laughs> yeah, I don't really think that one's for a podcast um, for all genders, okay? <laughs> that's right. Jesus. That started Depends out with, how you use it. That started out with good intentions. Um, anyways, um, we'll, we'll move right along. Uh, very exciting, obviously, to um, to have the Warriors um, women's team in the competition. Um, Isaac, uh, <laughs> during this game uh, for the men's side, uh, round four against the Knights, bro, uh, a bit of an incident happened earlier in the game. And uh, that was the meeting of what seemed like um, uh, Tyson Frizzell's, uh, you know, tongue and knee versus uh, Luca Mikiafu's uh, Samoan shin. And it didn't go well for Luca. Uh, but, bro, how does this change things for the Warriors? Ugh, it changes a lot. I think the injury is pretty serious. How serious it is, it's yet to be determined. It's, I think they were saying it depends on which one of the two bones in his lower leg are broken. Mm. Um, but I guess that sprung an opportunity for CHT to come in uh, and prove his wares, and he did it with a plum. But problem, I uh, guess, just yeah, Luca Mikiafu. I mean, it sucks for him. Hey, eh? his legs just don't do him any favors. Mm. Um, the the only consolation is um, rather pregnant bone in the ligament. And I get testified to that. Manier <laughs> so, would know. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rubber bone ligament. Uh, okay. Ligaments usually take way longer and don't come back to 100% normal. So, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah so, bone is better than um, muscles or ligaments and whatnot. Okay. So but it's just avoid... unfortunate, right? After the end of last uh, regular season that he has to go through this again. It's kind of funny, isn't it, as well? Because it's almost like a um, kind of like a sliding doors sort of moment. Thinking back to last year when we played Newcastle, somewhere around about round six or so. And in that game, Timide Martin was the starting five eight, and he ended up um, breaking one of the, one of the you know bones in his lower leg as well. And then, of course, in came Metcalf, got his chance, and and everything went from there. So, uh, kind of opens the door for somebody now to to go and give it a, a real good nudge. Uh, Moneta, um, let, let's run through it. We got uh, Chanel Harris Tavita came on, played for a good seventy five minutes during the game, and and played pretty well. Uh, also, you've got um, Demaide Martin, who played. He played pretty well in the New South Wales oh, yeah. Cup match as well. So, uh, who are you thinking between these two guys to re- you know try and replace Luke? Oh man, oh, on reflection, you know, I watched the um, the game before in the New South Wales Cup, uh, and um, yeah, it's Maru Luke look at you know, um, his distribution, everything. His kicking game was looking pretty solid, and um, but then you've got CHT. Um, he didn't look like to me, he didn't look like he missed a beat. Um, he was there with defense, um, so that support play, you know. Though he was saying he didn't realize the number two was behind him. Oh, <laughs> so he was smiling, time. yeah. <laughs> he was smiling, he said, Oh, there's the bit screen over it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's a bit of a conundrum, uh, a good one to have, mm. but uh, 
Yeah, on, on what and how they played on on the weekend. You don't must go CHT, but you had team on well, the bench. I think there's a win-win situation there. Almost so. Yeah. Well, see, it was it was a really inspired choice. Uh, I didn't mm. I didn't even keep up with, um, you know the the lineup change. Yeah, no. As things changed late, because when I saw Chanel warming up, I was like, isn't he like 18th man or something? Oh, I hadn't even kept up with the the fact that he'd been put onto the interchange bench, and that proved to be. A massive, massive call in, you know, in our favour because uh, Lord knows what would have happened if you know if he wasn't on there to come in and plug the gap. But uh, Isaac, let's just have a look at between Tamaire and Chanel. So obviously Tamaire Martin was the first choice uh, number six going into last year and and played in the finals as well. He came back for the finals. Um, does he, he's got a bit of stability to offer on his side? Chanel, uh, obviously he's maybe ahead of him in the pecking order. But is he perhaps better as a utility, having him, you know, be the backup guy because he can cover so many spots? I think they they're both pretty similar, uh, as in they both have utility value. Arguably, um, you know, there's a lot of murmuring about CHT playing in the lock position or covering the lock position in preseason. But Tamara Martin's played fullback before. You know, Tamara Martin can play in the halves. At a stretch, he could cover centre as well. So I think they're pretty much like for like almost in their in terms of their value to the team in terms of starting um for me this is just a personal opinion in terms of upside i'd have cht um maybe a little bit more starch on defense even though both of them are pretty strong defenders and cht has got a bit of a point of difference with the left um left boot where uh, luca mikiafu predominantly plays anyway so it mm. might it might play in his favor He's um, for him to play on the left hand side with his yep. left boot which is yep. It's a pretty, pretty good boot as well. Um, Marcelo Montoya. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. funnily right. enough, yeah, that, beautiful kick, um, wasn't it? That one. Yeah. We haven't scored many tries like that, you know, uh, this year or last year. So mm. to have that sort of option like that it was good to see a try like that. So I think, in terms of upside for the overall game plan, I'd start CHT, but I'd have TMM on the bench. I mean, he covers so many spots, and you can move the chess pieces around mid-game. Mm. He's, he's, he's a touch of class as well, oh, no matter where he comes in. You mentioned that we don't score many tries uh, in the, you know, from the, the kick, the attacking kick. Um, and I actually, I was a bit annoyed because I rewatched the replay today. And I still think Rocco Berry scored in the first couple of minutes. Cause, oh, yeah. Like, uh, uh, I, knock I, on. I just think the bunkers are getting so micro, microscopic with what they're looking at. And they're just losing the real feel for what's actually happening. When Rocco's got his hand in front of the ball the whole time, and knocking it towards him, it may touch someone else's hand, yeah. but then it comes back, hits him in the, in the noggin, and then he eventually duck, juggles it and, and reaches out and score. I just, yeah. Mm. That kind of got me more angry when I watched it on the replay. I was like, <laughs> that's a try. Come on, man. I, like, I, I fail to see how he could push the ball forward with the palm of his hand, and mm-hmm. the palm of his hand is facing his face. It mm. feels like this. It feels like... Yeah. Then it would have been different, but yeah. it was like right in his face. So, yep. how can that be? Yeah, well, I, think, I think the bank is going to get a perfect grilling. Um, again, oh, for a lot of obstruction again, oh. isn't being clear cut mm. once again. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Some sometimes they're cracking down on needless things, and other times they're missing important things. Um, yeah. Speaking of important things, another positional debate. Obviously, Roger. He came out, he did the sidesteps, he broke a couple of ankles, he got about a, a million versions of different memes floating around on the internet, uh, and a lot of people um, you know, saying that he should be the guy. Now, Charles Nicol Klukstar is back, he's due to be back next week, yes, the bunnies. Um, Moneta, what do you think? What do you think about the whole uh, Chance versus Roger debate? Oh, oh my gosh. You know, the week before, I was fully seeing K. Nah, you know, he'll play in the centre. But man, doesn't he look good at fullback? 283 metres, you know. And he, he hadn't played, like, fullback for how long? You know, for like three or four, <coughs> pardon me, three years. And they just proved his natural talent. And in that one play, he was shimmy shimmy. Like, the size <laughs> to two people and did bump people up. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think... There's a lot of debate, most of the media too, like with Aussie commentators saying, um, you know, if he plays in fullback, he'll probably get early in the way he's playing. 
but then you go to Weeks that he's already got a plan and um I like what Weeks has said is all about the team and um you know CNK is the number one fullback um for the Warriors but though it is it teases you though eh the potential mm. he has at the back oh yeah. my goodness <laughs> <laughs> and and especially when you see him make a play in the dying minutes when Kalen oh. Pong has got a, a you know three on one type situation Hing-go. And he Hing-go. just somehow managed to yeah, miraculously stop it. Stop it completely. Um that was oh, yeah, that, that was something so special. Good. Which leads actually I've got an idea for this. I know that Webster is you know, Sh- uh Chance is this guy, I keep gonna call him Chanel. Chance is this guy at the back. My idea is what they do is they they start with Chance at the back, Roger at centre. That's all good. At times during the game when we're attacking, like from, say, midfield, do a quick switcheroo just while we've got the ball. And then, for the final 15 minutes, swap them over completely. Send Roger to the back. Close it out. That's my... I call it the closer. I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> if that makes any rational sense, but um, that's my that's my wacky idea for uh, for the Roger versus um, Chans. Chans has played centre before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. And over yeah. the Kiwis. Yeah. Cool. I don't think it's a wacky idea. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, look at how you played and the bat this weekend. Mm. <sighs> well, the thing is, though, as as well, I actually think I still think our attack is going to get better with Chance back in that number one spot. Because mm-hmm. uh, not only will we automatically have an extra threat out on the left with Roger, but I feel like Chance is he, he understands our attack flow a bit more, especially going down that right side. Um, I'll throw this question to you, Isaac. Bro, what has been, what's kind of missing in our attack? Because we're still really yet to hit our, our you know, uh, hit high gear. That's it. I think um, the first few weeks when Charles was out, they tried that right hand play. Didn't work. It just, the timing was off. It's no fault of Taint or Picky. Um, the timing, the flow uh, was off, especially with Wade Egan not there. Now you've got Wade back and playing like an absolute gun and giving amazing ah. service. It's only, it only seems obvious to me that Chance goes to the back and you see a whole lot more traffic going down that right-hand side. Now that's not to say that you know, I don't love seeing RTS at the back. I mean, it just gives you the feels and you see him at the back there. But for the good of the team and for the good of the overall game plan and attack, Chance goes to the back. And you'll see a lot more traffic and a lot more tries coming down. Especially um, from DWZ. Exactly. Yeah. DWZ, he didn't score that record number of tries last year all on his lonesome. He scored a lot of them on his lonesome. Mm. Yep. But let's not forget what ch- how important Chance was to that um, to that level of play that they had down the right-hand side. Mm-hmm. But, you know, to your um, thought about the closer, um, I, get, I get it. Um, I get that... <laughs> um, that that, uh, that theory, but the way I see Chance and RTS playing is more like how the Roosters would play Tedesco and Joe Manu, uh, who are two yeah. world-class fullbacks. Yeah. Just give Roger license to roam, because that's what Joey does, but then you've got you know, a solid, if not spectacular, fullback in uh, Tedesco. But Joey Manu still gets lots of touches throughout the course of the game, even with Teddy at the back. Mm. And there's, I think after... This week's game, uh, after the game that's just gone, sorry, Andrew Webster would have seen enough out of Roger to go, all right, you get to play that roving commission type role as long as you get your ass back into position when when the time is, is called for. Mm-hmm. That's how I'd like to see it anyway. Yeah, because nice. the Roosters have proved it can work. So you're going you're gonna to go the, the Joey method. I like it. I like yeah. that too. Um, Moneta, uh, Isaac mentioned our man... The prestige was back. Wade Egan, back into the. He just makes such a huge difference to what we're doing, um, bro. What did, what impressed you about him, and how much of a heart attack did you have uh, when he looked like he'd picked up an injury? <laughs> oh, he gives me those heart attacks every time he plays. If I'm being honest, when he's down for the count, I'm like, oh. apart from that, um, he's he's class. Eh? He, he's up in the top three, right? Easy, look at his in the game and um just the way he passes the timing of his pass when to know to pass when to have that dummy run um that one he set up for a cht i mean 
Yeah, and they're just proof sizes for this. That's what we're kind of missing mm. to create that complete structure that we kind of played with last week. And my sense it's cake is that, you know, it will be like the ticker of like of what we can achieve. But um, yeah, he, he, he was amazing. And it proved that I'm sorry, Lassie, but oh man, you can see the gap. I'm sorry, but you can see the gap. It's quite wide from Lassie mm. to Egan. And it's not not for Lassie. It just yep. proves how good Egan is. Yeah, he's, he's one of the best in the comp. That um, Looking back at that Jackson Ford try, the first one, uh, man, you, you could see Wade just doing a, a one-handed scoop, a little bit of a you know, shimmy step to the side, and then just you know attracted the guys in front of him. So all of a sudden, he just creates problems for you know oh. for the defence as you go a couple wider already. I reckon he's a new South Wales contention. True. Yeah. I reckon he's contention for New South Wales. If he keeps on playing like that, yeah, yeah. I Probably mean, be look, I, I would be happy for him, but also, I'd like him to play for the Kiwis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those residency yeah, rules. Sure. You got the rule book out. Yeah, that's I'd right. Love to see him play I'm, for I'm, the Kiwis. I'm counting down the months on now how long it is for for three years oh, residency. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yes. But just everything about him, like it was just just even the way he like puts a ball, he just does the like the pass. He doesn't even look like he yes. does that. And he yep. goes off to the side and does the pass. It's just so these little things, but you you don't realize. But I mean, Matthews again, last it was great in that position. But he, the certain of things that um, you know Wade does, that it, it makes such a huge difference in the quality mm. of a pass against the Sean Johnson. You could tell it was like crisp. Mm. Yeah. Now um, Isaac uh, on the defensive side of the ball, um, Andrew Webster was happy happier with what we brought forward, only conceding two tries. Probably a bit, probably a bit to work on still. I think defensively, but. Mm. Uh, he said that you know we want to be a defensive team and and then you know build on that with our attack from there. Uh, what's you know what's working for you, uh, particularly uh, as we are scrambling and in our own red zone? It's probably the scramble defense is probably the biggest thing when you know you're scrambling because you're under pressure and it's easy for you, you to lose your head or not be able to organize amongst yourselves as players, especially when you're fatigued um, and the game's on knife's edge. But for the Warriors to come up, I mean, there was a couple of special plays in there. Again, RTS with a hand of God um, to save a certain try. Um, but one of the other tries as well, Newcastle was just from a short kick that could have gone anywhere. Yep. I mean, this is a 50-50 ball, yep. right? That short kick. And sure, they score, that's fine. But you take that out of the equation, and the Warriors' defense is pretty sound. We're not getting, you know, carved up up the middle. You know, which were worrying signs back in the in the dark ages for the Warriors, where we just get carved up right through the centre of the park. It's not happening. Mm. Teams are having to sort of think outside the square with their attack and put in those little chip kicks and grubbers and whatnot. So that's actually a good sign, despite the fact that they scored off them. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's too much to really work on on the on the defence. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was just it was pretty good. Yeah, two tries yeah. against Newcastle. I I looked at that um that try Bradman Best's try. Hmm. I just looked at that and thought that'd be a try against any team. Doesn't matter, you know. It could be good team, bad team. That's the way they the way they kicked it and executed on that kick chase. Brady, that's that's hard to stop. So, um yeah. So overall, good good progress. Monitor. Uh, we have spoken. You know, it's not about individuals. It's about the team. However, to you. Which individuals impressed you? <laughs> and not not including the ones that we've we've already oh, seen. I, <laughs> I thought Kurt Chamberlain on defense was the man. He made like forty eight tackles and he was everywhere really scrambling. Mm. He made a couple of crucial tackles um in the second half. Um he best in the heats. Um DJ Z in Montoya. Um they're starting to rev up in terms of the meters on deck. I mean they made both over hundred and thirty meters regards to their runs and I think we still see the machine work a bit better, you know mm. what I mean? There's still obviously a few more things and I have to say why is it always the last ten minutes that gets me going? Yes. Why? Always yeah. the last ten minutes. So um they're getting better, but that's a good thing, right? Um they're still in games but there's so much to improve on and that's what makes me more excited and we haven't even got our full shoot team, so you know, yeah. 
uh, and that's which is, um, you know, motto is the team. You know, but he's not individual, so. But for me, Kirk Catewell, I say, in case of defense, really mm. good. Not just his ass Yeah, I really like, um, I like the fact that you got two really good scramblers side to side. You got, um, side by side. You got Kurt, and then you got Rocco outside him. And you see both of those guys. Oh. Even if they get beaten or whatever, they will track back and, and you know, make a diving tackle. And both of those dudes, they're, they're doing it well. They're scramblers. They're scrambling eggs out there, um, which is, yeah, which is really pleasing and, and necessary at times as well. Um, one, maybe one, um, one encouraging fact I thought, uh, I've, I've heard a, a counterpoint to this um, from uh, our, our good friend of the podcast, Lancelot Moyava, who, uh, who, who wasn't happy with how much time Adam Fanua Blake spent on the bench. Isaac, I'm going to put it to you that that was actually uh, maybe a blessing for us. What do you think? I think it's a blessing. I mean, you, you love to see him on the field because he's such a threat. But I think um, the more impactful minutes he can have on the park, the better. And, you know, it's like the likes of Tohu um, having a bit of a spell on the sideline as well. And Webster's... Um, thoughts going into the season that he would like to see Tohu on the field, you know, a little bit less, you know. Mm. Um, and I think we've got the personnel to do that. I mean, back to Manure's point about, you know, the Cape Crusader, Cape World. Um, it's just a luxury to be able to have the likes of Jackson Ford and the Cape Crusader just plug in and you just set and forget on those edges. You don't need to rotate them. You don't need to interchange them. You can just set them there. They take care of themselves. And in the middle... Rotation is just really the middle rotation. That's it. Mm. You've got Barnett, you've got Neokori, you've got Bunty, you've got Adam. That's such a luxury to have. Um, so I, personally, I thought Adam could have played a few more minutes, but I get it. Um, and I think I, I could probably agree on that a little bit more throughout the course of the season. If you can get less minutes and Murata gets more quality minutes, you know. Mm. I guess they they probably just weigh things up, right? I think if we get to, you know twenty points to six up, um, you know as we head to the closing stages, you might just be like, well, I mean, let's just sort of let's just sort of you know see what we can do without them. Uh, although you're right, monitor, like it's almost like you need to set a little bit of an egg timer when there's five minutes to go because that's when the game really friggin' starts, right? You're just like, oh god. Here we go. We're up by 14 and, you know, just, you know, buckle up because it's, it's about to get bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's been like that as a Warriors fan for how many decades, so, right? It's the true. game's never over until it's over. That's right. Nanny Kravitz. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, Monitor, like, as, as we were just approaching to getting our top team back, Marata came back. Um, Chans is due back next week. Just as we're about to approach having our full strength lineup, uh, Metcalf, you know, gets injured, so <laughs> kind of pops that balloon. But uh, it creates questions in terms of how we're going to operate with our bench next week. So if we're assuming that you know Chance comes back, Roger goes into centre. Hmm. Um, how do you, what would be your your personal choice to have your four players coming up on the bench? Let's assume. CHT, um, guess they're number six. Um, I think Dylan Walker comes back. Mm -hmm. Um, Bunty, I'm dear follow. Hey, <laughs> yep, right after. And it's a toss between <laughs> Lusset and Timmy or Jazz Delana. Those Ooh. three I find quite hard to choose. So, I'll be honest, I don't know, it's between those three, but I think it's between oh, Lusset and probably. The latter, so it'd probably be between Tim and um, Jess Tadanga. To so, provide oof. that sort of utility value yeah, slash. Yeah, uh, same way that uh, CHT did. Yeah. And um, Gene is called by uh, Webster with CHT in, so. I know, right? Yeah. Was he, was he reading the tea leaves before uh, before the game or something? He was like, you know what? Chanel, bro, you're on, man. <laughs> I called it, you know, oh, that week before God. when his service was just like. Night and day compared to Lusick, again, I hate ragging on Lusick, but service is just such a big part of that Warriors machine. It mm. needs to be crisp. Wait, I mean, wait, let's, let's be clear that Lusick, no, he, he did the job. He did a really good job. Um, like, just the difference between Egan, um, 
yeah, he he has the top three, right? And um, yeah, just make sure we flash the air and we still think you're the man. Yeah, so, we still love you. We still love yeah. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's never coming it. back on the podcast, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. No, no, no. <laughs> Stuff you guys. Yeah. <laughs> nah, Sorry, good Freddy. Um, Isaac, uh, I guess from how you've been speaking, really good to see um, Marata come back as well. He is just a, a mean, mean dude, and I love it. Um, Isaac, what is your bench looking like against the Bunnies? Uh, pretty much the same, except, yeah, TMM on okay. the bench. I think, I feel like he could do a service in the halves, or he could do a service at hooker, and arguably either one of CHT or TMM could slot into the hooker role. You know, And then you're not losing too much defensively either up the middle with either one of those two there. Or, you know, he can fill in at fullback. He can, they, they can just cover a lot of those back positions between CHT and TMM. Hmm. There's not too much of a loss of quality there. I mean, say, say if, say if um, a chance gets injured, or chance gets injured, gets injured, yeah. Or one of the centers or one of the wingers. Between the two of them, they can cover a lot of ground. Hmm. And then, yeah, Bunty, he deserves a spot on the bench. He's been playing lights out, in my opinion, for the past couple of games. But he's um, only getting three meters a game. <laughs> doesn't matter. I mean, defense, that, right? Dude. When I watch him, all I'm doing is I'm watching him on defense and I'm yep. loving everything that I see out of him because he's just putting a lot of starch in the defense. 20 yep. minutes, 19 tackles. You know, he made, like, a lot of tackles in the time he was on the field. So, mm. and he would just stop players, you know, in yeah. spot. Like, yep. didn't, didn't, they didn't get any post meters off him. Yeah. So, he stops right. a lot of the moment, that momentum, the, you know, yeah. the PCMs. Mm. And that's pretty tough to do. Like, there's some other people running him. That's right. And a couple of his, yeah, a couple of those hits, they were, they were bunty, weren't they? They, yeah, boom, yeah. stopped. He's getting known for that now. And then I guess yeah, on the on the bench, Murata, and then it's a toss up between uh, Jazz and Dylan. It depends on which way you want to play it. Dylan's mm. probably got a little bit more creativity than Jazz, uh, but Jazz has probably got a little bit more hard nosed up the middle. Um, so it might be a horses for courses thing depending on who they play, mm. who they pick between Jazz and um, Dylan. Yeah, right. Jazz has been doing a good job too as well lately. Good to see him. Uh, good to see him, you know, just getting stuck in and actually just getting a good run, especially with injuries and now that he's yeah. Yeah. he's been enduring. So cause I know his, his future isn't certain beyond the season. So mm. um, I like to think he's, he's going to do a, a good job um, across the year and, and just, you know, force, the, force our hand to, to bring him back. Can um, I make a shout out to Ben Farr? Yes. I, I watched the game before. He's going to be someone to watch out for. Like, he's, his, his pace, it's almost it. Yeah. And how he breaks the line. Like, he made them look like, you know, <laughs> he made the opposition look the weak in defense at times. Eh? Oh, bro. <laughs> he, he killed them. He absolutely killed them every time he got the ball. Um, they just, they, they couldn't handle him. Like he, he was another one. I was like, obviously a lot of the chat's been around Timari and Chanel, but then you got, you know, Ben Farr who was playing six in the New South Wales cup team. And he just, he brings someone else. Like he's a wildcat. Like all of a sudden you're like, well, you know, what is, what does Webby do? Um, but I guess the, the common sense approach would be to go, uh, with the experience that I think maybe, um, Maybe where we showed his hand last week when he put Pompey um, back in the left centre role. He did a solid job too. Did it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, good old Pomps. Just learned during the week that a uh, guy named Pompey was the original protector of Rome. So uh, so apparently, uh, you know, he was... Uh, well, this week, Pompey was, was the protector of that left centre position until Roger comes back. But uh, boys, just quickly before we jump out of here. Um, against the bunnies... Sorry, the rabbitos. They're not, not an animal. Um, yeah, what, what what do we do to get it going? What do we do to spark it up, Isaac? Uh, match them up the middle. Again, they've got a pretty experienced and pretty solid forward pack. I think they are missing a little bit creatively in the halves, uh, and they're still trying to find their mojo uh, in that back line. I think they're missing Alex Johnston as well. This week. Yes. Yep. Injured, too. Bad, bad in hamstring injury. Yeah, so I think it, it all starts up the middle again, and I think the back's... The backline play will take care of itself as long as we can dominate up the ruck. Because mm. um, yeah, they're at sixes and sevens at the moment in terms of um, their attacking game. 
So we just need to park up and just not let, let them have a chance out of their own half, and they'll get desperate. They'll mm. put everything on on uh, El, you know Latrell Mitchell's shoulders, and that's too much for one man to handle. That's right. We've got to make sure. It, it almost seems like every bloody time we play against the Rabbitohs, Cody Walker just somehow just oh. turns the Superman against us. So uh, that's true. Yeah. So the more we can do to nullify his influence, I, I guess. Yeah. Man, it's, it's he like, hasn't yeah. been playing that good. Lately, so I just hope we oh, are. That makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I've been watching the two tangs of the Ram shows, even though they'd be the opposite of the Bulldogs. They're still going to look pretty good. Mm. Uh, and then there's that first one, and Cody still looks a bit out of sorts. So I'm just hoping he just comes <laughs> to sorts against well, the, us. The rabbit out of the hat. He always that's does right. it against the Warriors, <laughs> eh? He always no. does that. No, oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah. So the eyes are probably still look like a bit disjointed. Um, in terms of the Haas and um, the Luttrell, they're still looking a bit, you know, um, they're just being the fact that if you should be playing full back because he's not, you know, putting in the effort on defence and covering. And mm. So, um, but God, we should win this. <laughs> we we might, uh, might see Sean putting more long kicks more towards the middle rather than the corner, trying yeah. to run Big Trell around a little bit. but. Yeah. Um, uh, but boys, uh, we're going to jump out of here for now and we'll be coming back uh, tomorrow night with uh, Teams Day as the, uh, the the teams are announced. It's kind of a bit of a funny one because it uh, kind of uh, doesn't feel like it's Monday already. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back tomorrow night with uh, Teams Day, run through the sides and, and get you all prepped and excited for this uh, this massive game against the Bunnies. So uh, on behalf of Isaac Soss, Monita Soss, my name is Jared Cronin, also on behalf of uh, Daniel Whatakura, who was out at a whānau event um, tonight. Um, yeah, uh, we'll catch you next time here on Warriors Anonymous. And, uh, yeah, up the wires. Up the wires, up the Warriors Anonymous. And, uh, yeah. Go the Warriors! And up the wahines. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs>